What's up, guys? Welcome to the stream. We are uh, here. Well, I'm joined by Orange for the casting of this match, which we are getting ready for. Ooh, we have a nice, beautiful green screen behind yeah. us. Looks great. <laughs> it's like cast casting in the tavern. Yeah, with a little bit of sunlight coming through there by the looks of it. Oh, there's there's a lot of sun here in Germany at this time of the year. It's like almost as hot as it was in Valencia. Yeah, yeah it was really hot. I was really I think surprised. We, we all kind of expected a break when we came, right? And then Absolutely. It was the same temperature, so. Yeah, so here for the first match, we're going to watch RDU versus LA. It's like um, two very, very strong players currently. I would say two of the... Favorites to go out of their group. They actually have a really strong group. It's uh, every group's a strong group. Yeah, right? yeah, this is a tough of, of course. But yeah. but this one in particular, I feel like this might be the second strongest group in the entire event. It's RDU, yep. it's LA, it's Mr. Yagut, and it's Nastam. Yeah, like all, solid. all four very very solid players that have proven themselves recently. In I'm trying to think of the last time I've seen RDU and Zolay play. They don't really match up very often. They often play yeah. in different tournaments. I mean, RDU will play on the European ladder. Zolay plays on the North American ladder. So it's kind of like the cross faction rivalry there coming yeah. into play, which should be pretty interesting. Oh, and and don't don't forget, it's also Horus versus Anubis. Yes, it is the two Egyptian teams facing off as well. I still have no clue what that is. How it's gonna matter in then, but it sure is gonna matter somehow in then. So I'm so now I'm so I'm not like torn here. I have Saleh, my former teammate, but then I have Ardu, which is my current teammate in the Egyptian game. Yeah. So who should I share for? Hmm. So uh, just to give you guys a bit of an idea of what we're looking at, we can actually see the players uh, playing right now, which is very interesting. So we can watch the tension on their faces. Uh, they're just playing their test game right now, and then. Just, 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 just spectating. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll check it out. Then we're gonna jump right in. But yeah, we can see the tension on their faces. Uh, obviously, this is the first match of the day, right? So all yep. the players uh, beforehand, we were just kind of hanging out in the basement, right? And we're just chilling. Everyone's making a bit of small talk. But you can tell there's nervousness. You're playing against all these other really strong players in a tournament like this. So uh, one second. Saleh has to enable spectators. Okay, My there mark. we go. Test game is done. Uh, also, one thing. Uh, the uh, for for this um, for this tournament, it's the same format as Valencia was last weekend, and yep. bo both of these play played in Valencia. So I know I've been prepared for Soleil for both events, and I know that like we learned a thing or two for uh, what we did in Valencia. Yep. But I bet the same is uh, true for RDU, and he also has like all of his G2 teammates to practice and prepare with. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Like I, I yeah. actually know both their lineups for Valencia, so it's going to be fun to see what has changed from that. So speaking of Valencia, one of the things we, we learned was, so this is last year of standing, right? Yeah. And um, the Nazoth Paladin in Valencia oh, right. was, was that deck that kind of surprised people, right, by being good in last year of standing. So I'm not sure if either of these guys would have brought it. Normally the lineup would be something like a warrior, a warlock, a shaman, and then an extra class of druid, mage, yeah. hunter, something like that to fill in. But definitely seeing the success that Nazoth Pelin had in the last year of standing format, it wouldn't surprise me if we see someone bring it today. De de definitely, it was uh, it was for sure the it was for sure the breakout deck of uh, yeah. of, Dr of Dreamhack Valencia, seeing how Evangel and took first place with, and I think one more player performed really well with it too. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I know for a fact that Slay is not uh, a big fan of uh, and soft Paladin, and well, I also do know that he didn't bring it, but he already <laughs> <you> did. <laughs> Never all, that, know. all that sneaky pre-game talk. <laughs> but there's a lot of mind games that go on there, you can tell between the players. Alright, so we're hopping right into it. Seems to be um, Druid versus Sue, and uh, by the looks of it, Saleus brought... I like one of the slower control Druids that's like more popular these days, and... Uh, are you the standard Sue deck that you see? So uh, we don't actually get to see what they banned, but I have a feeling that uh, RDU had a Warrior, which was banned, and Zelay probably had a Warlock, which was banned, yeah. which means that uh, they're actually almost the identical lineup, if it's true. Exactly, only with different uh, ban strategies, it looks like. Very interesting to see that uh, RDU opted to go with a Warlock ban. You have seen like people debate between Shaman and Warrior ban a lot, but the Warrior ban has not been as popular. Maybe uh, he has some inside information. See, one of the things with Warrior is you often worry that it's the type of Warrior that would be counter to your lineup, because there are three to four types of playable Warriors right now. But if you knew or had some inside information of what 
warrior your opponent was bringing, you could be confident about that. I will note that uh, Zelay's name is spelled wrong if one of the production team wants <laughs> to help fix that for him. Uh, that's actually a very common. Uh, I've, uh, that's, it's just the first time I see people spell Zelay's name like that. Mm. I mean, it's pronounced the same, right? That's, uh, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay, okay. so, Druid versus Zoo. Mm. Cafoon Druid, by the looks of it, yeah. right now. Um, we see not not having the wild growth, and he didn't have living roots on turn one, which is usually what you want. But it still looks to me like uh, Soleil has uh, like some good tools to not uh, fall too too much behind yep. early on. Um, but then again, like RDU has a pretty classic Sue draw too, and I think that like Dark Shadow Councilman is one of the most problematic cards for the Druid deck uh, to uh, answer. Uh, from the suicide, so that is like one of the cards that you can just like snowball the game with. Yeah. Um, the four mana Cthulhu card I actually find is really strong in certain matchups with the Divine Shield. So yeah. like against Shaman or against Warrior, a Divine Shield taking an extra attack can be pretty huge. But against a Zoo Warlock, because they have multiple creatures, often you don't get as much value out of it, and something with higher stats yeah. might be preferable. Yeah, absolutely. I get here. It's just like. Most of them, Be between the Possessed Villagers, the Void Walkers, the Ardent Spires, yeah, Knife Juggler, it, Forbidden Richard, you know, there is just so much stuff, and like, yep. and something like an Abusive can finish it off, so, this is, this is probably, like, what you see from Cafu's Chosen here is probably as good as it gets in this matchup, like, so... Do you think you Ritual? So, the problem here is if the Druid has Swipe, right? Yes. You Ritual, and the Druid... I uh, can swipe the Void Walker and then trade the 4 2 on the Councilman, it would completely clear the board, which would be a nightmare. Yeah, I, I don't think you really can afford to go for to go for the uh, the ritual right here. I even, like, in in some cases versus Sue Warlock, I keep swipe for, versus them, and yep. RDU has to know that the, what, that is one of the cards that Sale is really looking for. You're just opening yourself up to. Uh, it, to swipe on turn four is like, if he can avoid it, I, I definitely would. I think this is like slightly better, even though you're still weak to swipe. I agree. Um, especially the councilman is protected here. It gets really difficult to kill that, and when you know it'll scale larger next turn, it's, it's nice to keep that alive at all costs. Yeah, so what can Soleil do here? Like, mm. his go to option is just play another Cafoon's Chosen, but. Um, it's not bad. It, it, it's not bad, but you're uh, sure not really answering the Councilman, although you put the pressure on RDU again to protect this Councilman, which I, I think is alright. I just think that yeah, like your hand is like a bit clunky. You uh, you want to uh, play on curve as much as you can, like when you can afford to, and I think this is one of the turns where you can actually just afford to play on curve, but and the game has not snowballed too much out of your control yet. I will say if uh, Zelay, because he got both Cthulhu buffs, if he was to draw Innervate, he could Innervate into the sevens next turn. Mm -hmm. Should give him uh, two and twenty-one to draw Innervate. Uh, that would just be huge. I think it's almost yeah. impossible for Zoo to clear those so early. Yeah, Twin Emperor is like uh, the such such a good card. I like I. I play Cthulhu cards more for Twin Emperor than like Cthulhu itself. <laughs> yeah. it's, like there are so <laughs> many decks that cannot beat the Twin Emperor whenever it comes down on. Well, even turn seven, and like if it comes out any any earlier than that, it's just ridiculous, you know. Yeah. Also, especially in Druid, where you curve uh, curve into Arakoa into the Twin Emperor, it's just so good. Well, I don't think you trade here because he'll probably do that trade anyways, and then you just miss some face damage. The Druid's yeah. getting pretty low. Yeah, Soleus kind of showed you that it doesn't have the swipe and stuff, so yeah, I think you can afford to just go face. I think he definitely had the option to tap there, but because he has uh, the Councilman on the board, he's really interested in just getting as much damage early. Yeah. Ooh, there's a potential card that could uh, punish hmm. RDU for... Yeah. But... Means he gets to Raven Idol too, right? And then yeah. you really wanted to see like if that Raven Idol got you something nice. Yeah, so the, the plan is to first we Raven Idol, see if we find anything good, and then uh, mulch the Councilman, Living Roots, the Six Wampus, and trade into the Inkang Boss. That way we leave our opponent with two 1 1s on board. That's We're on 15 life, choice. and we can curve Solanas into Twin Emperor, and that should be enough to survive, right? I mean, the bite's pretty good. 
Bite is good, but it doesn't answer the councilman this turn. But I think it's like a great uh, a great card to have for either turn turn eight or nine after we went go Sylvanas into Twin Emperor or even Druid or the Claw into Twin Emperor. Yep. And out out of the cards the he yeah, could choose there, definitely think that that was the best option. I think the bite will probably just go face for health, right? I'll just want to tank up later because that looks like the zoo's moving very fast to win. Ooh, Ooh. That was a really good <laughs> mulch card. Oh man. Uh, this is live by the mulch, die by the mulch <laughs> kind of thing. It's Wow. <laughs> you couldn't ask for better. I mean, the Druid had exactly 15 to activate that yeah, as well. Yeah, it's, it's on turn, turn 6, perfect on curve. Th that is pr pretty unlucky for Soleil, but oh, it's also it like, this is the downside of having mulch. The card would just be a little <laughs> bit too good. Uh, I didn't even so. see RDU crack a smile when he got that. He just looked focused. And Zelay, of course, when it was played, kind of sat back in his chair like, oh, no. <laughs> they ever see something interesting. We see a uh, Jogstron drawn into the seemingly Cafoon. Cafoon drew with deck. So apparently we, we've seen Cafoon mm, yeah. drop out of the buff. So apparently it runs both gods, which is, well... So Druid is one of those classes with access to a lot of spells. There's something like Raven Idol where you're getting two spells for the cost of one. Generally, the Cthulhu cards take up so much space that you don't have room to play too much. Almost uh, dead, but... Uh, it, oh, with the Squire. To the, nice. to the Gromok, yeah. That is lethal, and that will be game one to you. I feel like without the Dracodid Crusher, I'm pretty sure this would have went Soleil's way, but then it was yep. that it got a nine power minion for six <laughs> mana. <laughs> Perfectly like, on curve with yeah. the 15 health on Druid. You just couldn't ask. That was beautiful. Oh well. But the oh, such is life. As I said, mulch has to have a downside. Sometimes, sometimes that downside really bites you. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've seen, for example, one of my one of my best mul uh, mulch moments was when I watched a friend. He went turn 10, mulch or Cthulhu, and play an Ancient of War. This opponent goes the Black Knight from mulch <laughs> on the Ancient of War. You know, stuff like that happens. Uh. Yeah, Mulch is a really interesting card in that way, where Druid just doesn't have access to a lot of good removal, so you want to play it, but then it's it's this gamble mechanic that otherwise Druid's a pretty consistent deck, right? You don't have yeah. too much that you're gambling on, and so that really forces certain situations. I think on average they're not getting like as good as a minion as they got now, but it's definitely something that will happen like in some cases. I myself think that uh, Mulch has been like a very, very underrated card for a very long time, and I'm really yeah. happy to see it start seeing... like way more played than it once was. I think especially with the nerf to BGH, right? Yeah. Because now you, you don't really want to bring that around. It's too expensive, so you take a more efficient removal. Uh, absolutely. Okay, so Soleil picks his Warrior now versus uh, Desu. Uh, a pretty good matchup for Warrior should be. Uh, but we see how Ardu has teched uh, Aesthetic Swampus, so he can actually beat yep. the one card that's like the most problematic for Su, which is Fiery War Axe. Mm. Um, Not the greatest hero powers. The start from Zelay is absolutely beautiful, though, with yeah. uh, uh, one drop on turn one. Like it's the only one drop in his deck. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. If he draws, uh, if he draws a dragon, like and has Alex draws us active. <laughs> yeah. Plays us champion active. I have a very hard time seeing him lose. But then, like, I would already be like, yeah, this this game is Zelay's. But seeing the city swamp boost in RDU's hand, I actually think that uh, this game is like pretty close. I agree with Zelay choosing escape shift here. A lesser heal could be like can be really good, but. Uh, Often you want to kill them, right? You yeah. want to hit them in the face. So. Yeah, exactly. It, it, and it helps like whenever you have a weapon equipped. Like for example, Fire War X can now kill uh, Imkang boss, which is incredibly relevant. You know, no dragon. That dragon would have been so beautiful here. Yeah. Void Walker is exactly what you want to kill. Yeah, it, it, when it, whenever you get to Alex Ross's a tunnel frog or a Void Walker, you're just like so happy. <laughs> here we're gonna see. The swamp boost now and now the Alex Rise of Champion does not look that great, even if a dragon is Ooh. there we see it. Mm. I guess you go for the slam. I mean there's yeah. no sense in trading. Yeah, I, I like the slam here too. Um you kinda want to pick up a four or a five drop uh, to be able to play on curb. Then again you have the Alex Ross as champion for turn four or five if you don't find something, and then you have like the six into seven. So I don't think you necessarily need a card of slam. Just and having a 1 free. So, like, the options are like we either slam the Savior Swampus or we hero power and uh, send Finlane. But I think the value of having Finlane play is like greater than like possibly getting the one card value out of slam. 
I would agree in most cases, though. Of course, against a Zoo Warlock, you are always a little scared of running out of cards yeah. because of their hero power, right? That's one of your main weaknesses. Is there, there's also one more thing that's like quite relevant. But no, no, it actually works the same way. I think like if you place Councilman next turn, you can slam Alexstrasza's champion it. But in yep. the same way, you can Alexstrasza champion hero power in Finlay if you if you were to play it. Yeah, I agree. Keeping the Finlay around is really nice, and we can see that it's uh, really hard for RDU's hand to play into that at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, RDU is not really drawing his free or free drops <laughs> or high impact spells. He's only drawing his one and two drops, which. Slay actually like the the, the scape sh shape shift here is like coming. It seems to be like very very great for Slay, uh, considering just how it matches up versus RDU's hand. If he had had an armor up, this would be an entirely different game. So RDU's discovery is uh, Elven Archer, Power Overwhelming, Mortal Coil, which actually is a huge amount of choice there. All three of those cards <laughs> are pretty good. I I'm just looking at the choice. And I have no idea what I would choose myself. He seems to go with the Power Overwhelming. Which seems to be like thinking a little bit ahead, like what will Soleil probably play on turn four? Yeah, it's probably a Twilight Guardian, and that way one of our Dark Peddlers can uh, trade cleanly into that. Yep. Hmm. Well, he gets to clear the board, and uh, you never want to have an empty board as a Zoo Warlock. So. Yeah. Well, so seeing how Soleil will play out this turn by killing both the Dark Peddlers, it looks by RDU like he wanted. Uh, like he wanted, would want the Mortal Coil more than wants the Power Overwhelming. Yep. But uh, RDU's logic is right that uh, most likely Slay is playing a 4 drop on 4, which is like Twilight Guard and Blood of Brave, something like that. Uh, and he, like, you don't really play into them playing a 2 drop. So I like the Ritual here, but uh, you can, of course, squeeze in some of the 1 drops and then play Ritual. Uh, the big thing is, because his creatures have 1 health, the classic counter to Ritual is the Ravaging Ghoul, and then it would kill Slay's own creatures yeah. as well. I, I really like the ritual too. I think it's uh, it's a great play here, and uh, RDU seems to agree. So I guess the reason that you don't play um, the other creatures is because he has creatures to trade with, so then they're going to get extra value. Yeah, this is pretty gross. Yeah, that's. I think Slay has drawn some of like some of the only cards in his deck that he could uh, possibly not play here. I think I would say that. Barring a Gromash, every single card in his deck is like playable here. But yeah. uh, he'd, he drew uh, two after a Rag and, uh, Rag and Grom, which means that this turn is going to be very weak and probably exactly what RDU needed to start climbing back in this game. And then, of course, probably the Crusher, right? Comes out as 6 6, but RDU with that power overwhelming abusive is going to be able to clean it up really efficiently. Yeah. I think uh, I think this may be all that RDU really needed to snowball out of control here. He plays through this one fast. He must be pretty comfortable with. Uh, yeah, I, I was just gonna say he was he was touching the Ardent Squire and was like, that is not correct. Like seeing how we have power overwhelming in hand, you definitely want to possess villager out first because it works so much better yep. with the PO. But but he seemed to realize that before he actually played Ardent Squire. RDU is often someone I refer to when people ask me for a Warlock list. I say, this guy plays Warlock really well. But I think many players uh, would want to rope that turn just in your positioning for the future, the decision to maybe tap or, or develop more creatures. There's a lot that goes on when you have that many cards. Yeah, yeah this is RDU's go-to deck. Like, whenever he he doesn't know what to do on ladder or, like, whenever he's unsure about something, he just, like, brings out Sue and plays it really well. So... Someone I really, really respect, and I, I myself, you say that you tell other people that I use myself, go and watch our news. Uh, yeah. Next, whenever, yeah. whenever I need a good. Uh, I always Marlo check play. his Twitter and say, oh, what did yeah. he win with yeah. recently? Yeah, he's uh, very consistent about it. Exactly. All right, so easy. We milk rock into Doomhammer, right? Yeah, that seems to be That's the place. Just That's just right there. Absolutely what I would do here. <laughs> Um, uh, you, you can uh, go with a Blood Tracker if you want, but I'm pretty sure they use Malkorok here. And that is oh. not a Doomhammer. It's one of the lowest tier weapons you could have. Oh, like, even even so, even if that is like one of the worst weapons you can ha have there, it's still good. But this, this is lethal. Mm, that's Seven. a lot of damage. At Seven, the very nine, least... Sele was uh, expecting to win this one. This was his counter pick <laughs> to the Warlock, so having lost this, he'll be left with a very hard matchup. Yeah, it's being left with Shaman. That is like, oh. even, even if it's mid range, even if it's aggro, it's. Uh, <laughs> There's the other <laughs> most expensive card in his deck he could possibly draw. Yeah, I have to say that uh, I think if Sele only had like one play on that turn five, it 
doesn't matter if it was like the second slam or a fire dragon. I used to think that he would. Yep. It would definitely not look like this. The game would have been a lot closer only by that. But uh... Uh, realistically, the ooze tech from RDU is super clutch there, right? Yeah. That that tech choice uh, to nail down warrior, and he purposely didn't ban warrior, right? So he knew just what he wanted in that lineup, and it showed through in that game. Yeah. The, very interesting. We've seen like mo most players ba ban warrior in like recent days, or yep. at least. I banned Shaman during Valencia, but like every pro player I talked to was like, no, you have to ban Warrior, so... Well, and now with that new, uh, the Worgen Warrior oh, coming yeah, out too, there's the even more things to worry about, right? Exactly. There's so much that a warrior is capable of. Here, here we go. Oh, that looks like a great hand for Soleil. It yep. even curves out real nicely. You can go turn one Golem into Squire, into Totemic, into Flame Word Faceless. I think this is a slam dunk keep, and like you'd... Not much to think about. Um, yeah, yeah, he agrees. <laughs> it's a uh, nice curve. I say, man, we see a pretty little right hand from RDU. His we biggest issue is drawing another one drop next turn to fill in, right? Because otherwise he'll have only abusive on board and the squire will trade up on it. Yeah, so you definitely want to uh, coin the totem column here. If you play squire, you can. Uh, coin Tuscar after, but then you'd be stuck with an awkward overload setup. I, I actually strongly <laughs> disagree with, um, with this play. Yeah, I mean, I guess he's going for the Tuscar, right? But uh, that is surprising. I, 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 don't, I don't think you can ever afford to uh, go for the Tuscar because then you have to overload yourself on turn three, which is. What's the best answer to Coin Totem Golem? Was there anything, a Soul Fire, I guess? I guess, better. I guess Abusive is like your, your best answer, but. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Soulfire. Soulfire is obviously better. My bad. Uh, yeah. So that would that would be problematic, of course. But uh, then you still have Darden Squire next turn, and like you're pretty much, like now you're just in the same same spot, but one turn in before as if your opponent had Soulfire. You did make him tap, though. He didn't want to abuse the flame him to face there. So uh, the Warlock actually passed the turn, which makes the Squire look kind of appealing, though it gambled mm. on Warlock having no play, which <laughs> often doesn't happen. But then again, if he uh, if he abuses uh, the totem golem and, and does the trade, uh, and you play the squire, you're gonna have a squire in play versus an abusive sword. And yep. uh, I'm gonna I need to talk to Slay about that after the match. I'm I'm pretty confident that uh, you want to go with the you want to go with the, the totem golem on turn one. But uh, it seems to be working out. Like he's still in a really good spot here. I can't imagine uh, Ardu doing anything but uh, play the Imkang boss here. Although, yep. although get, getting to protect the abuse by a Void Walker here is not terrible. But it's like awkward mana usage. I think the the gang boss has kind of caused chaos. Like right now, even if you efficiently kill that totem golem, he's playing something else next turn. So the chaos that you get by Having this kind of hard to kill gang boss, which will spawn more, is really appealing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> time this for is, some RNG. Yeah, time, <laughs> time for some to more totem golems, am I right? Boy, it's ridiculous. <laughs> he gets totem golems. Yeah. Here, Especially in matchups like these that are so uh, poor control oriented. So your positioning is kind of important. If you put the Tuscar on the inside and you get Flame Tongue, then you could uh, kill the gang boss in one hit. You put it on the outside. You could use the squire to kill the flame imp instead. I think I like uh, putting it next to the totem golem uh, because that way the Arden squire can still finish off the one one of um, that the implant boss will spawn. So he seems to disagree. Gets mm. the one one totem. N not not great, but not bad. It would be really bad if he didn't have the Squire in play, but now seeing how he has the Squire in play and already something that the... Uh, and the Tusker Timing too, that the Imkan boss can farm of, um, I think it's like one of the better ones, sparing like the Flame Tongue, the Monotide, or the Tony Column. Well, you have to imagine RDU has a feeling that a 4-4, or a 7-7 for 4 mana is yeah. coming up next turn. He sits with a Power Roaming ready for the 4-4. So he's definitely not in terrible shape if that happens. Hmm, you don't have to play it. You have the other... So if you play the Flame Wraith now, then next turn you have three mana, which means you can use your Totemic pretty well on curve. If you don't overload now, you have five mana, so then you could play Flame Wraith plus one drop next turn. Hmm. But 
then again, so so it works both ways. If if he plays uh, faces now, he has options next turn. If he wants to play double one drop, or if he just wants to play the three drop, and I think you're saying like, hey, like, do do you got it to R D U? Like, do we have the answer for my seven seven? Is like a good idea because if it doesn't, it, the game just runs out of a, runs out of control in Soleil's favor, and Ooh. if he has the answer, uh, like, it's it's just a normal game still. So, you could do the Power of Blowing, or you could also do Gormok. Yeah, he's going to go for the Gormok. So, if you did not Gormok, you could do Juggler and uh, Voidwalker there, which is also a pretty strong board setup. Mm. Yeah, that is, that is brutal. Most like, people don't expect Lightning Storm out of a deck like this. He's playing Finley, so yeah. you really rarely see that. <laughs> I prepared for, for Soleil. His, uh, with Soleil, his Shaman deck is a little bit... He actually just like said himself that I don't really know what I'm doing, but I put <laughs> some cards that I like in Shaman in, and uh, it's like some kind of hybrid between uh, aggro and between Shaman. I have a feeling RDU is not going to play around Lightning Storm. Oh no, no, yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, actually, well, right now it could st from the cards that RDU have seen, it could still be Midrain Shaman, but like the second he sees Finley, he's probably going to be like, oh, it's aggro Shaman. Like I can just overcommit as much as I want. And that's one of the strengths with like My doing. Shield. Like switching things up like this, as they have, have done, that you can afford to do stuff like that. Kind of sucks to trade the gang boss away. Yeah. Well, there's never really going to be a better time for Lightning Storm than that. Yeah, if it, now especially you compare it with the Feral Spirits too, I think it's just time to burn it and except that Defender might still be in play, the Gormok will still be in play, but then maybe if you high roll on that, one of the Feral Spirits can take care of that. Yep. Yeah, the high roll on the Gormok is really important if he's going to follow up with Feral Spirits. Yeah, if it does, one or two high rolls here. Like, th double low roll, and I think the game is like pretty much over, but if he gets the double high roll, I think he's a favorite to win the game. Oh. And he gets it. <laughs> he gets it too. That was beautiful. That is what Soleil needed to uh, claw back in this game, and I st th still don't think that he's in great shape by any means, but for that sure what he needed. a pretty poor draw. That second power yeah. while doing nothing at the moment. Maybe if Soleil... Oh, that's... That's really nice. Yeah, that's really nice. Gotta hit the Voidwalker. You could also Finley first and see if you get a 1 damage hero power. Yeah, and if you get like ping or shapeshifts, I don't think you take the rogue hero power even if you get it. Then you just go for the 33 percenter. But yeah, I would definitely lead with Finley, I think. I agree with you on that one. Not what he wanted. At least it wasn't face. Yeah, at least it wasn't face. And now the question is, what do you want to go for Squire or Finley? What do you think about this? I'm actually like not sure at all what I would go for here. I'm trying to think if he has thing from below how many totems he's played th thus far. Because he might need like another totem or two to he make thing from below very good. He played three totems, two, double Tusker to Temek and the Totem Golem, I'm pretty sure. Goes with the Squire. I guess the Squire is just harder to remove because the Councilman's going to have enough attack to kill Finley. Ooh. Mm. Oh, rip power overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. You can kill the Flame Juggler with one of them. And squeeze the tap in. Yeah, power welling the Voidwalker. Exactly. It's sad to throw away that much damage. I mean, the Shaman's yeah. only at 15, you actually almost have lethal. Exactly. But then again, like, you have a Councilman and a Doom Guard in play versus someone that did not play on Hex last turn, so you, sh you should be alright either way. Looks like right now he's three damage short. You could power overwhelming the Voidwalker, hit the Ghost Wolf, power overwhelming the Councilman, goes to six, play Doom Guard seven, and then plus five. That's really close, all things considered. Because as soon as you don't use the other power overwhelming, you've lost that damage permanently. Tap gives him a Sess Villager that is not the greatest draw right here. I have for the trade, he has to go face with Doom Guard. I, I, I like it. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, there's another card that Slay was like, I kinda tried this card. We, we were, 
I was advocating Lightning Bolt, but decided to like Stormcrack a lot better because of uh, Frothing Berserkers and uh, Toad and Golems. So I guess you Finley first, see if you get a Hero Power to kill the Councilman, otherwise you Stormcrack it. Yeah, uh, I agree. You, you got a mana to do most things this turn, so... You could also Totem and then Stormcrack and play Finley after if you wanted the Totem here. I don't think so. I think you want to, like, if you could save the Stormcrack to help with the... To help with the Doom Guard later on, although the Flame Weird Face is probably gonna just like as an extra removal spell in hand, right? If you can use your hero power to remove a minion, I think that's great value for you here, and you need to be kind of conservative with your cards here, considering you don't have much to work with. So okay. I would definitely look for a hero power first instead of a bit. The, uh, the Priest Hero Power might be pretty appealing. You could heal the Flame Wreath after it trades, and you could also uh, heal yourself since you're really low. Yeah. It goes for the Totem. Right. Still not playing the Finley. Looking for damage. Not enough. It's a good play still. still. Yeah, I, I, a great setup for protecting the juggler with the defender of Argus and just get to. Well, maybe protect the yeah. Doom Guard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you could protect the Doom Guard too. Yeah, it's. it's uh, you, but you push one extra damage if you taunt up the villager and the doom guard. Although I do not know how relevant one damage is at this point. You put him to three. Yeah, like f four is the golden mark, right? So since the since the yuggle hit face, I think I like uh, the yuggle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Learning the, from show. The, 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 Swedish, <laughs> the Swedish comes in there. Show uh, the crap. <laughs> I mean, we're both Swedish, right? So. <laughs> uh, yeah, seeing how, how it hit face, I would uh, go for the go for it on uh, villager and the uh, juggler, but he decides to protect the juggler instead. Mm, I don't see any way out. No, I don't see any way out either. If you Finley roll, if into life tap, elemental destruction. <laughs> easy, that easy. That is out. We got and it. And play it as whistle. I sadly have to inform him that there's no elemental destructions in this deck. That's what he told you, anyways. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe he switched it up last second. They're like, yeah, let's sneak one in there. Well, this was a pretty unfavorable matchup. That's why Zelay picked it last. The yeah. warrior really needed to beat the warlock for him to take the series. Yeah, it's actually really surprising. We we actually had like Sue. We thought we prepared for Sue. Um, for Sioux Warriors and Shamans this yep. tournament and seeing him go 3-0 uh, down to Sioux is like not what we expected and not how it went to testing. But then again, yep. are you one of the one of the best uh, Sioux players out there? Definitely if you were to lose to one Sioux player, it uh, might as well be are you because it's really, really good at this deck. Made sure power was uh, technically like one of the best ones for this matchup, but it's just too late now. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking if he didn't tow them last turn and got the major hero power and still had a storm crack for this turn, maybe he would not be maybe he could, would still be in it. I think the game basically comes down to the turn one where he didn't coin out the totem golem. I would I would have liked to see that and see how this how the, that game would have played out if that happened. But uh, overall, pretty good. GG's. Quick. I mean yeah, GG's. perfect play by RDU, right? Can't find any yeah. faults in anything you did there. Yeah, it, it played really well. I worth a winner, and uh, Salah is not out yet. He moves down to the losers bracket of his group, which means that he has to win his next two matches to go through to the next group stage. Cool. And RDU moves up to the winners, and is only one game away, one match away from advancing to uh, to two days from now, I think. So, uh, well, he plays again today, right? I think. Yeah, Anders yeah, exactly. Good. Yeah, yep. they they they, f they finished their group today, and. Uh, then, then there's the next set of group stage tomorrow, but then the second group stage starts on the third day. And so. much drinking tonight after the games. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. We're see story after all. Uh, well, I guess that wraps it up uh, yep. for us for now, and we'll come back to you guys later. Thanks yeah, for absolutely. watching. Thanks for watching, guys.